The threat of supervolcano eruptions lingers for thousands of years, according to new research and data. Supervolcano eruptions cause some of the greatest catastrophes in our history of our planet. We call them extinction level events, and yet we still don't really know how to predict when or how they will strike. Instead of slipping into a quiet recovery period, new research suggests some of these large volcanoes can remain active for thousands of years after their initial eruption, posing a threat for much longer than we thought. Now we know we have about 21 some odd supervolcanoes around the world. Sometimes the supervolcano might even go quiet for thousands of years before briefly acting out again. These later eruptions are much tinier than the initial explosion, but they still represent a hazard. While the super eruption can be regionally, globally impactful and recovery may take decades or even centuries, this is what volcanologist Martin Danzig from Curtin University Australia says, our results show the hazard is not over with a super eruption and the threat of further hazards exists for many thousands of years after that. The findings are based on models of the Toba super eruption that occurred nearly 75,000 years ago and what is now known as Lake Toba in Sumatra, Indonesia. What's left is a complex caldera with a smattering of domes and other features, most notably the youngest Toba Tuff, which represents the last major eruption at the site. At the time, the supervolcano blew approximately 2,800 square kilometers of hot magma into the air, one of the largest eruptions known to date. Some scientists think the explosion was so massive, it actually triggered a decade-long volcanic winter and a global period, glacial period, that may have lasted a thousand years, although the details of the fallout are still hotly disputed. Please support my Patreon account. The daily posts are five videos daily, and they are totally different from what I have on my YouTube channel. Thank you so much for your support, and that you find all my content so interesting. You'll find the Patreon account details in the description box. Now it seems a volcano's recovery phase, known technically as resurgence, is also under contention. The quiet period that comes after a supervolcanic eruption may not be so quiet after all. Danzig says, the findings challenge existing knowledge and studying of eruptions, which normally involves looking for liquid magma under a volcano to assess future hazard. But the liquid magma underneath Toba appears not to have stuck around for long after the initial eruption. Instead, as the floor of the caldera cooled, it squeezed the remnant magma up and out along fault lines with a carapace on top that Danzig likens to a turtle shell. The finding is based on two proxies, the minerals feldspar and zircon that hold a timestamp for volcanic gases like argon and helium. These proxies are, were measured from samples of volcanic rock taken in the Toba caldera to see if its dormant period resulted in any eruptions. We re when researchers used the resulting geochronological data and plugged it into thermal modeling, they found multiple boots of feldspar and zircon, and these eruptions were separated around 13.6 thousand years. Ultimately, the model suggests that a dome in the north of the caldera erupted around 4,600 years after the initial eruption, colossal eruption, whereas the Tuk Tuk Dome towards the center erupted uh, after an 8,000 year delay and the dome in the south erupted after a 13,000 year delay. So all of these later eruptions appear to have tapped the cold halo of the original Toba magma system during its dormant period, they said. The authors write, our work thus demonstrates a significant delay between the youngest Toba Tuff eruption and the eruptions of these domes. We propose that eruptions of the domes signal the onset of resurgent uplift and associated opening of pathways to the surface through which remnant solidified conduit plugs and dikes were extruded to the surface by invading magma acting like a plunger in a syringe. 
Even though these domes held cooled magma for thousands of years, the material was not so cold as to withstand eruption. The magma was not reheated by lava underneath, but instead it probably shot up into the air in a subsolid state. In light of the findings, the authors argue we need to reevaluate our concept of what is actually eruptive. The remnant magma after the initial Toba eruption was probably coarsely crystalline mush that was barely mobile and not eruptible, the author said. Yet once it made its way into the domes, it seems to have become eruptible again. More research is needed to figure out what exactly triggered this volatility and whether something similar could happen to other supervolcanoes on our planet, namely like Yellowstone, they said. So the magma was solid and then it turned mushy. So how did that happen? Now, given how little we know of supervolcanoes in general, the suggestion that the Toba supervolcano continued to belt smaller bouts of magma in its resurgence period will no doubt continue to be discussed for years to come. There might be rest for volcanoes, but not for volcanologists, they said. Learning how supervolcanoes work is important for understanding the future threat of an inevitable super eruption, which happens about once every 17,000 years, Danzig says. Gaining an understanding of those lengthy dormant periods will determine what we look for in young supervolcanoes, active supervolcanoes, to help us predict the future eruptions. This was on Communication, Earth and Environment, and it's on Science Alert by Carla Casella. So obviously, look, okay, every 17,000 years we have a super eruption, but it devastates the whole world. And there's basically no way we can stop it. I mean, we don't have the technology today to do that. Please leave your comments and thank you for your support.